We study stem cells, and I'd like to start with just a simple question. What are stem cells? Well, stem cells are cells that have the capacity to make an animal. Those are embryonic stem cells, or they can make and replenish a tissue, such as in adult stem cells. And stem cells of the body have the remarkable capacity to undergo a process that we call self-renewal. These cells are able to divide endlessly to generate self. But these cells also have the remarkable cap capacity to be able to divide to generate cells that are very rapidly proliferating that we call transit amplifying cells, or TA cells. These cells are in a transition zone, so they're rapidly proliferating, and at some point along the lineage, these cells then will go on to differentiate to create the tissues of the body. So what's the difference then between an embryonic stem cell and an adult stem cell? Well, embryonic stem cells are what we call totipotent. Embryonic stem cells have the capacity to generate all of the tissues of the body. In contrast, adult stem cells are what we call multipotent. These cells can generate several tissues, examples such as hematopoietic stem cells of the body that can generate blood, cells of the immune cell system such as B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes, macrophages, or cells of the, hair, of the hair follicle stem cells. These cells can generate not only hair follicles, but also epidermis and sebaceous glands. There are also cells of the body, stem cells of the body, that are called unipotent stem cells. And these cells have the capacity to generate only one type of tissue. An example of that would be the epidermal stem cell, which as far as we know is only capable of generating epidermis or liver stem cells, which as far as we know are only capable of generating hepatocytes. So where do embryonic stem cells of the body come from? Well, my laboratory studies the mouse, as do many of the researchers in the stem cell field. And in the early developing embryo, we call this a blastocyst. And already at just only a few days old, the blastocyst already has differentiated into two different cell types. One cell type you see here in pink, these cells are called tropho trophoblast cells. These are feeder cells that support an additional group of cells called the inner cell mass. These inner cell mass cells are the only cells of the trophoblasts that are able to give rise to the fetus. These trophoblast cells are, uh, in contrast, cells that are supporting the inner cell mass. So the inner cell mass of the blastocyst has the capacity to develop into the fetus, and these trophoblast cells are support cells they do not contribute to the fetus. So another remarkable capacity about embryonic stem cells and about early stages of embryogenesis is that all of this development can happen outside the womb. This can happen in a tissue culture dish. So cells from the inner cell mass can be removed we can take these cells and we can put them into a tissue culture dish. And now these cells, which become embryonic stem cells, can divide and replicate endlessly. So these cells continue to divide. They continue to generate more and more embryonic stem cells, an infinite supply of embryonic stem cells. And then we can ap appropriately adjust the tissue culture conditions so that we can regenerate blastocysts in a culture dish. So these embryonic stem cells are capable to give rise to this structure with an inner cell mass and with a trophect trophectoderm. And yet, if we culture our conditions slightly differently, these cells can just divide and endlessly generate more embryonic stem cells. And then, if we take this blastocyst and we implant that, into a pregnant female mouse, that blastocyst will give rise to a whole mouse. 
And so these are truly totipotent cells. We can divide them endlessly in a tissue culture dish. And if we culture them to the blastocyst stage, we can implant those blastocysts into the mice and generate more mice.